Question number 23, the zona orbicularis is the arthroscopic landmark for access to which of the following structures? As we saw in our uh, initial case example, the psoas tendon uh, traverses across the anterior aspect of the hip joint, and the uh, zona capsularis can be used as a window to access the iliopsoas tendon. So that's the answer to this question. That provides that that area of the capsule provides access to iliopsoas tendon for lengthening uh, during hip arthroscopy. So we'll review hip arthroscopy. These are the indications for hip arthroscopy, which you should be uh, familiar with, <clears throat> as well as the contraindications. Uh, hip arthroscopy can be performed in both the supine and the lateral uh, decubitus positions. Traction is necessary to provide adequate access to the joint. And there are different arthroscopic portals that you should be familiar with and have been the source of various uh, study guide questions. So the anterior lateral uh, portal is placed first by most surgeons, um, and that's done with fluoroscopy and a, a cannulated system. The anterior portal can then be placed. This gives us access to the anterior rim as well as the lateral rim. And then the portal, posterior portal can be used for outflow as well as access to the posterior aspect of the hip. So here on your monitor, you can see the different portals. The anterior lateral portal is off the anterior lateral aspect of the greater trochanon and primarily used for visualization of the joint. And the posterior lateral portal again provides access to the posterior hip and can be used for outflow as well as working along the posterior rim of the acetabulum and accessing things posteriorly. The anterior portal provides access to both the anterior rim, the anterior labrum, the lateral rim, and lateral labrum. So that's very much the workhorse portal uh, for uh, the majority of hip arthroscopists. The distal anterior lateral portal is approximately three centimeters distal to our anterior lateral portal. That portal is used to access and work within the peripheral compartment. So with more contemporary hip arthroscopy techniques, that portal is used for our head neck recontouring as well as capsular management and capsular repair at the end of the procedure. In terms of complications, um, the questions in this area tend to focus on nerve injury. So just to review the potential nerve injuries, the pedendal nerve uh, is a relatively common injury from traction. Prognosis is excellent and uh, in the vast majority of cases resolves in a short period of time. Perineal nerve injury uh, can be seen with excessive amount of traction or duration of traction. The anterior lateral portal puts the superior gluteal nerve at risk, but really this is more of an issue if that portal is placed more superiorly than classically described. The posterior lateral portal theoretically puts the sciatic nerve at risk, especially if the extremity is externally rotated. So if you use the trochanteric landmarks, the limb is externally rotated. That may push the surgeon more posterior than they desire putting the sciatic nerve at risk. The anterior portal, uh, really the main issue there is the lateral femorocutaneous nerve. It's right in the area of the nerve, and irritation of that nerve is quite common uh, with uh, hip arthroscopy. The femoral neurovascular bundle is, is two to three centimeters medial, so that's, that's a low risk uh, injury with placement of the anterior portal. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.